Hi Maslow, so I've got your third tasks here. Um, really well done on completing these and it, it's clear that your writing is improving so that's really good to see you're taking on board all the feedback um, and that's it's really great to to notice this in your writing um, let's look at what you've got then for the first task so the issue of rural exodus has been studied since the advent of industrial revolution there are many factors involved in this phenomenon which will dictate whether or not the benefits of this migration to cities outweigh the disadvantages i strongly believe that living in urban in urban areas in average terms is better than living in rural ones especially for young adults this essay will analyze specific causes for that and argue with some examples from around the world okay well done good so a strong introduction there so um, outlining the question, giving your opinion, saying what you will do in the essay. So there's three really good points there. Um, good. Uh, okay, so I would say that your first sentence, although it is a good one, it doesn't add a lot of meaning to your introduction. And because we obviously need to be careful of our word count i would say that we could actually take that one out because we don't lose anything by not having having it there um we could say instead there are many factors involved in this phenomenon which will dictate whether or not the benefits of this migration to cities outweigh the disadvantages okay so um we would need to change this sentence slightly and say um there are many factors involved in migration from rural areas to cities um, these factors dictate whether or not the benefits of this migration outweigh the disadvantages okay i strongly believe that living in urban areas in average terms is better than living in rural ones especially for young adults this essay will analyze specific causes for that and argue with some examples from around the world okay so just to go back to that the beginning there okay what i would say here is that um the problem that we've got here is that the first sentence is very descriptive and doesn't add a large amount of meaning the second sentence so many factors involved in this phenomenon is good but we can't use it as a first sentence so what i would say instead of what we mentioned earlier is to say perhaps that um instead of saying that it has been studied since the advent of the industrial revolution we could say perhaps um migration to uh, urban areas is a problem that has been studied and debated for a long time okay this way instead of being descriptive about the history of it and when it started we're saying that it has been a problem for a long time and then you could talk about the factors there are many factors involved in this phenomenon which which dictate whether or not the benefits outweigh the disadvantages with an a here disadvantages v-a-n-t-a-g-e-s Okay, that way your first sentence is um, more tailored to the question and not too descriptive. Because the first thing we want to do in an introduction is show the examiner that we've understood the question. Okay, all right then. So the next paragraph, on the one hand, it is fair to state that medium and big cities are better provided with public services than rural areas. So, um medium has one d in the middle so m-e-d-i-u-m um so medium and large cities we could use instead of big here large cities are better provided with public services than rural areas the reason for this is twofold good firstly it is a political consequence of the concentration of people in a given area in Sao Paulo, Brazil, for example, the ratio of schools per student is 1 to 1,000, whereas in rural areas nearby, it is of one school to 5,000 students. 
Okay, well done. Good. Good. Okay, this feature acts as an attracting pole for big cities, pulling people out of the countryside. Okay, well done. Good. So, this feature acts as an... Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. An... Attracting pole. I would say instead attractive force of big cities, pulling people out of the countryside. Good. Secondly, politicians elected by urban constituents are more sensitive and responsive to public pressure, okay, which is linked to demogra demographic concentration than the ones elected by rural constituents. Therefore, people living in big cities have political leverage to demand social reforms, raising their standards with a D at the end, S-T-A-N-D-A-R-D-S, standards of living, in a more effective way when compared to rural ones. Okay, good. Okay, so we've got two big points here. One of those is education. The second one is politics and um, how politics can have an impact on standard of living. What I would do at the end of this paragraph is just to summarise both of those points, okay? So, for example, um, political leverage, raising their standards in a more effective way than compared to rural ones. Um, saying something like, as such, both education and political... Uh, and having a political voice or something similar are um, attractive features of cities that draw people from rural areas. So similar to that sentence that you had earlier, but we want to round off the paragraph um, and linking it back to the question, but also to have those two points recognised so that they're not two standalone points, but, they, the, but, they, you're, but that you're using them in conjunction. Okay, so on the other hand, although rural areas might have their advantages, because we're plural, their advantages, as f as less exposure to drug traffic and urban violence, so less, L-E-S-S, -S, it is very frequent that those places lack important economic opportunities and resources. Consequently, people living in the countryside face higher unemployment rates, especially nowadays, due to the mechanisation of the means of rural production. Good, well done. In those places, it is also harder for people to have access to qualified services as internet and shopping centres, such as internet and shopping centres. In addition, people living in the countryside often report, R-E-P-O-R-T, no double P, a feeling of being left behind by public authorities and business corporations, what strengthen the desire to move to cities, which strengthens within us the desire to move to cities. Okay, good. So you've spoken about from the point of view of the cities and then from the point of view of the rural areas, which is good. Uh, in conclusion, now this last part here, in conclusion, summing up, we don't need both of those. We would say, in conclusion, I personally consider that lives in big cities or urban areas, although facing big challenges regarding crime rates and high costs of living, are provided with better economic opportunities and public services when compared to the countryside. This is vital, especially for young people who are trying to figure out a way of making a living and earning money good. For that reason, nowadays, rural exodus still constitutes a major geographical occurrence defying solutions and public policy considerations in major cities around the world. Okay, well done. Good. So, a very, very well-described essay and, and well-argued here. You've got some fantastic phrases and coherent ideas as well, which is, is great. Um, what I would say is, how long did this take you to write? And um, does it coincide with the time limit in the exam? If it does, then brilliant. Uh, if it doesn't, then possibly you need to time yourself when writing to get more of an idea of how much you can you can finish within that time. Okay. Um, this is quite 
a long piece of writing so um what i would say is that there are a couple of areas where we could reduce things slightly um so there are a couple of places where you've used kind of sub clauses uh, like this one here which is linked to demographic concentration um, are provided with better economic op uh, sorry although facing big challenges regarding crime rates and higher costs of living uh, it's just being careful not to add too many of those because that will kind of sacrifice our word limit and we won't be able to get all of our points in okay so um if there were one criticism here i'd say that in some situations it's a little bit wordy um for example if we take this example here therefore people living in big cities have political leverage um so we could take out to demand social reforms raising their standard of living in a more effective way so we could take out a few of these words so when compared to rural ones for example because we've already mentioned that um sometimes as well when we have two examples of adjectives we could use one so um politicians elected by urban constituents are more responsive instead of sensitive and responsive also sensitive has one s in the middle s-i-t-i-v-e okay so we could use just one of those to avoid going over our word count the same here so in conclusion summing up we don't need both of those we can use just one of them uh, but yes um despite those things and they those are not big criticisms at all it's a very good piece of writing with some very well informed examples so really really good work um let's go on to your second one so this was your academic task okay um and this was all about the school subject matter in new south wales okay so the two graphs depict um in the picture uh, okay the two graphs depicted in the picture above show the percentage of preference by school subject matter in New South Wales in 2014 and 2017. Okay, so I didn't see the part where you said in the picture above, so yeah, depicted is good. In the picture above, show the percentage of preference by school subject matter in New South Wales in 2014 and 2017. Okay, well done. Uh, so the main difference between the two images consists in the reduction of maths as an area of students preference okay so consists in is not quite the right word here so the main difference between the two images is evident in the reduction of maths as an area of student preference no apostrophe s there just student preference which fell from a percentage of 27.3% in 2014 to 12.2% in 2017 well done good what I would say is because it is a name of a subject, maths would be a capital M, maths. Um, on the other hand, the increase in history, again, um, capital H, as an area of preference was very accentuated, raising from 1.2% to 19.4%. Okay, so on the other hand, the increase in history as an area of preference was accentuated rising instead of raising rising r i s i n g from 1.2 percent to 19.4 percent okay chemistry which had only one percent of students preference now students because we're talking about more than one student we'd have the apostrophe after the s so s t u d e n t s apostrophe preference in the year 2014 so no of in the year 2014 had not reached any percentage in the year of 2017 okay so in the year 2017 okay good well done yep yeah, so that is good okay physics with a y not an i so p h y s i c s and i t performed similarly in 2014 and 2017 in terms of participation 
as areas of preferences. Preserving, P-R-E-S-E-R-V-I-N-G, the same ratio, around 20% and 1% respectively. Okay, um... Okay, so physics and IT performed similarly in both years, I would suggest, because we've said the, the years quite a lot, so we want to vary slightly in terms of participation as areas of preference. Okay, so similarly in both years, I would just say in preference, preserving the same ratio around 20% and 1% respectively. Finally, biology, capital B, so uppercase B, had a considerable increase in student preference, rising from 13.4% to 24.1% in the registered period. Good, well done. Geography and PE also suffered a reduction of preference, although not as relevant as math. maths as mentioned above. Um, okay, what I would say here, because you're talking about an increase right before, if we use also, it sounds a little bit disjointed because we've got an increase and then we've got also. So, but we're talking about a decrease, so it's actually on the contrary. Um, so what I would say instead is, on the contrary, <laughs> uh, geography and PE, comma, as maths, comma, suffered a re or, yeah, as maths, comma, suffered a reduction of preference, although not as significant. Okay, and then full stop. Okay, um, it could be that um, this sentence is still a little bit disjointed to have at the end there, and we could suggest that you put it further up. Okay, so because you've got a decrease with maths, you could have this decrease in geography and PE also there and then have the increases together okay because it would it would show a little bit more coherency than having um a decrease increase same same increase and then decrease again it would be perhaps better to have the in, uh, the decreases together so that you don't have to refer back to math but uh, maths but you would have it just after instead that would eliminate that problem there okay but a very good comparison here and nice use of kind of rising, fall, um, not reached any um, percentage, so, so no, no figure there, considerable increase. These are good as um, variation of different terms. As well, uh, the registered period is good instead of always saying 2014, 2017. We could also say, as we mentioned, um, in both years instead of having to say both of them so the the individual numbers and that would avoid any repetition but yes very well done two very good pieces of writing that you should be very happy with and um, enjoyable to read as well so well done